Hello, I'm Dr. Mike. Today, we're going to talk about mast cell tumors in dogs. This type of tumor is very unique in how it behaves and how we treat it. To learn more about mast cell tumors, we're going to meet with Dr. Mona Rosenberg, who is board certified in veterinary oncology. Mast cell tumors are skin tumors that can occur in any dog or cat. Certain breeds are at higher risk than other breeds, but any dog can actually develop a mast cell tumor. So a mast cell is a normal cell in the body that is responsible for responding to allergic reactions. If you get stung by a bee, the area gets red and swollen and hot and itchy, and it does so because these mast cells move into that area, release their substances, and that results in the swelling, itchiness, etc. So occasionally, these normal cells in our body, for some unknown reason, which may be genetic, uh, may be re result of a poor immune system or the aging process, these normal cells undergo a genetic mutation to become a cancer cell. Mast cell tumors are a collection of these normal mast cells that have lost their regulation so that they continue to divide and grow, um, forming an actual tumor or mass and they typically occur on the skin or just under the surface of the skin. About 50% of mast cell tumors will occur on the limbs and about 50% will occur on the trunk. Mast cell tumors can look like just about anything. The classic is a little button or pink, hairless, raised little nodule on the surface of the skin. But sometimes they can occur, as we said before, underneath the skin where it might even feel just like a little fatty tumor. Sometimes the borders are discreet and very easy to see, and sometimes not. Mast cell tumors also can come and go, so it's important to really know your dog and get a sense of if you find a little lump or bump, keep an eye on it, but only for a day or two. If it persists for more than two or three days, we really should make sure that you seek out the advice of your family veterinarian to determine whether this is a lump or bump that you need to be concerned about or something that uh, can be left alone. Inside of mast cells are a number of substances, um, in particular histamine, which is part of that allergic reaction that we've spoken of. If that histamine is released into the surrounding tissues, the mast cell tumor will actually grow. But as that histamine is taken up by the body, then we can see regression or sometimes complete disappearance of that mast cell tumor. Um, and it gives you the idea that whatever this was is not important. You should always ask your family veterinarian to give you a map of the body so that you can keep track of these. Because if something does go away, but in the future should come back in the same or similar location, that is a red flag to us that this could be a mast cell tumor, and you should seek uh, a consultation with your family veterinarian immediately. If you and or your veterinarian are suspicious of a mast cell tumor, the first thing that he or she will do is take a tiny needle, suck some cells out, and squirt those on a microscope slide to be examined um, more carefully. Once we've confirmed that your pet has a mast cell tumor, the next step typically is to surgically remove it. The most important thing to remember if you suspect that your pet has a mast cell tumor is to make sure that you take your pet in to see your family veterinarian for a full physical examination and an analysis of the lump or bump that you've identified that you're suspicious of. Treatment options for mast cell tumors can include anything from surgery, radiation, or chemotherapy, and often the outcomes are excellent. Just because a pet has cancer doesn't mean that it's a life sentence. There's lots that we can do to provide extended quality of life. Dr. Rosenberg discussed some very important points that I'd like to summarize. First, mast cell tumors can vary in their appearance and therefore require veterinary attention to diagnose. Once diagnosed, your veterinarian will surgically remove the mass. If radiation or chemotherapy are required, they can be performed in many cases with little to no side effects. Finally, if you see or feel a lump on your pet, bring it to the attention of your veterinarian for proper diagnosis and treatment options. I'm Dr. Mike, and thanks for watching.